So I want to take a couple of minutes today to go over some effective or efficient ways for beginning each Zoom class. So um, there are a couple of principles that I try to provide every time I would start a Zoom class. The first is I try to provide a, an agenda and not just a, a verbal agenda. I will try to provide a visual agenda, so oftentimes sharing my screen um, with a, a PowerPoint slide up that has the agenda or a, a Word document that has the agenda. And then I'll take the first couple of minutes to go over that agenda with the students so that they have a sense as to what the class is going to look like. Because um, one of the things that we don't have in a Zoom environment often is a lot of the visual keys, uh, visual cues, and the informal interaction that we would often have in a face-to-face -face classroom setting. Um, so providing some sort of uh, sense of expectations and how class is going to run and what students can expect um, both in terms of the content as well as how you plan to use the platform. Most students have a good sense as to what a class in X is going to look like if they're in a face-to-face -face setting and the, the way in which the instructor is going to use the physical medium that they have available to them. That's not always the case in a Zoom environment, particularly for folks that are new to it and particularly as they get new faculty who maybe um, haven't had the same experiences with Zoom as they've had with their classroom teaching. The other thing that I want to encourage is that as you ask questions in your class and um, provide opportunities for students to uh, give feedback or to ask questions of you, you want to make sure that you incorporate good wait time. And this starts right from the beginning of class. So oftentimes, folks walk into the classroom and they take 30 to 60 seconds to describe what it is they're going to do today. And then they say, does that sound good, everyone? No questions? Okay, let's go. And they jump right into the content uh, right at that stage and they don't provide the opportunity for the students to sort of take in what they've just said and ask questions of them. So one of the things I'm going to do here now is I'm actually going to play a section of a class. This not only is the beginning of a class but it's actually the beginning of the first class of a semester. So you get a chance to see how the instructor incorporates some of these ideas into that very first class of the semester. So here is an introduction to our, our class and this is what we'll be talking about this evening. Um, we'll have a, a kind of an overview of Zoom and, and, and what it's about um, and a, an, an introduction to the course itself um, and then we'll get into the meat of things with the overview of evidence-based practice and the clinical nurse leader role, um, formulating a PICO question, and uh, what EBP, microclinical microsystems, and uh, the CNL role is, and how those all tie together throughout the course of your program. Um, we'll review the Johns Hopkins question development tool very briefly. Um, that is your assignment um, two. And uh, then I'm gonna turn it over to Dr. Moore Harper at about 7.30. She'll come on for 10 minutes uh, is an introduction of Furnishing 606, and then those of you who haven't already will be breaking out um, to uh, speak with your advisors. So any questions uh, before we get started? Okay. So, So hopefully you saw all of these things being incorporated into that specific example. So you'll notice that the instructor did have an agenda put up on a PowerPoint slide. They took about 60 seconds to go over both what they were planning to do in terms of content, but also how they were planning to use 
the Zoom platform for the purposes of conducting that class. And if you notice at the very end, they ask if there are any questions of the students and they wait about 15 seconds before they start into the actual content, which is roughly where that particular clip ended, to see if the students had any questions at that point. And while you're watching it, 15 seconds might seem like it was a long pause, you know, but it was only a 15 second pause. So, and that's one of the things that we often find with wait time is the fact that it often seems a lot longer. The silence seems to drown on a lot longer than the actual time that has passed. And the reason we want to do these things, these weren't necessarily just things that this instructor did that I thought were useful or things that um, they did that were just happened to be in the clip. But if you look at the research that's gone into how we begin instructional events, and this is not new research, as you can see on this slide, one of the dominant views of how we design instruction, regardless if it's done in a face-to-face -face or remote environment, since the 60s has been Robert Gagne's Nine Events of Instruction. And if you look at that 75-second clip that we just watched, essentially what you were seeing there was one and a little bit of two. So you had that agenda which was a way of trying to gain the students or the learners attention and having that sort of gain attention feature if you look at the way it's described it says focus students attention and it doesn't have to be anything elaborate obviously you can see some of the examples there or icebreakers or these types of announcements or having some kind of activity that focuses the instruction, but it's something that essentially you do on a regular basis at the beginning of every class that lets the students know that, okay, we're ready to start. Maybe that's taking attendance, and then once you finish the attendance, saying, okay, now that we're all here, and that's what you use. And obviously, some of these things will gain students' attention or focus more than others, but as long as you have that sort of consistent type of of activity. Um, and then one of the things that it suggests that you do, actually if you look at both two and three, is essentially trying to let the students know, okay, these are the things that I'm hoping to accomplish today from a content-based perspective, and this is how it relates to things that you should already know. right? And these are the three steps that you want to take at the beginning of each lesson prior to actually getting into any of the material. And it all starts with that sort of focus at the beginning and a consistent and useful and really low risk way of gaining students attention is to essentially spend 30 to 60 seconds going over an agenda um, which will outline what's going to happen for the rest of class. So that was a quick little overview and example of a way in which we can begin each class within our Zoom environments as we are in this remote teaching setting.